There are as many reasons for collecting art as there are art collections. Some do it for the intrinsic value that they associate with art, others for commercial gains. Although most collectors do not pursue their passion expressly to make money, those who eventually amass an exceptional collection find themselves exceptionally wealthy. In this episode of Secret Singapore, we will take you through a chain of services and the people who make them happen. And together, we will try to answer the question that's foremost in everyone's mind. How do you make money out of art? I think it's a good time for us to get started. I will take you to a special warehouse where these investment-grade artworks are kept in top investment-grade shape. Private art collectors and art galleries store their collections in climate-controlled warehouses specifically configured for artworks. Security in these facilities is tight, and understandably so, as millions of dollars worth of artworks is stored in them. They are fitted with advanced technologies to safeguard against exposure to extreme temperature, humidity, and light. Storage is entrusted to highly trained warehouse and security personnel, and access is very limited. It's in the interest of investors to look after their assets and keep an eye on internal and external factors that may affect their value over time. The same is true in art investment. Each piece is kept in optimum condition that ensures not only their safety, but more importantly, their physical condition as well as integrity and value. Let's step back and appreciate why protecting the physical artwork is integral to protecting its value. The motivation to acquire an artwork may be different at the time of purchase. And today, as one reads about the growing prominence of the artist who created it, and the optic performance of his works at recent exhibitions and auctions, one begins to see the piece in a new light, as potential capital investment, instead of a mere signifier of status and taste. Buy only what you like. There's a high chance that you will be gazing at it for a long time. I must say that we have um, different clients in Asia than different clients in, uh, in Europe, for instance. What we found out that in Singapore, many people are just starting with the art appreciation. Um, and we see that over the last 10 years that we've been here, um, there's an increased demand. I mean, the trend is going fast in the right direction, we would say, right? We have to make a distinction. Uh, there are many people that buy art as because it's a pure passion. They cannot live without art. If you go through the history of art, as an asset class, is the one that always beat everything. It has always been consistent. But like all sort of investment, it depends what you buy and when you buy and what price you buy. Uh, each collector has their own set of priorities and reasons for collecting. But it's true that majority of our opera gallery selection are investments, so to speak, or rather they can hold a great value in the form of assets or investment. The gallery has a dynamic and fantastic clientele that ranges from new collectors that are looking to start on a strong foot to more seasoned and already established collectors that want a certain piece of a certain caliber to add to their portfolio. They always pay attention to the finer details. Lately, we have been seeing an upward trend in the number of young collectors who have both the purchasing power and the passion for collecting especially when it comes to contemporary art. At the same time, we also have collectors from the older age groups who have been active in the art collecting scene for years. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter where the starting point is, as long as it is a passionate investment. That's what I always encourage people, to buy what they like. Obviously, not blankly, do your homework. Try to understand the originality of the piece, the originality of the artist its place in this contemporary world where we live, or the modern world where we live. Um, is it really so unique? 
who are his peer? Is it better than them or not? Try to get the originality because in a, in a way where everything is, we live in a fast world where everybody's copying each other. I try to find something that really stand alone, where they have really something to say, identifiable artists. The art auction market is something that a lot of collectors look to for benchmarks in art valuation. Auction results are readily available on the internet, which provide a means for collectors to monitor patterns in art appreciation. Another one, how big is the artist's body of work? Is it showcased in any very good museum or part of good private collections? Most of what people are drawn to is museums and galleries are big names in the art history. Pablo Picasso, Marc Chagall, and many others. The importance of these artists in art history guarantee their value in the art market in almost unarguable ways. There are a lot of similarities between uh, fund management and art management, right? So in fund management, in my case, of course, you need to have the overall outlook or expectation of the world economy, of how countries are doing, you know, their GDP growth. Because I, I'm a fund manager, so I invest in stocks and shares. So very often when you are buying a company, you're actually buying the CEO and his team in terms of whether they can execute, right? Because if they can make money, then the share price will go up. With art, it's, it's the same in the sense that it will be good if you are able to know the artist uh, well, to maybe study his character. Mm. If you're looking at the macro, then you also have to look at the country because within that macro situation, uh, there are certain peculiarities, shall we speak, you know, of, of the art. That's right. right. So for example, now, what's happening in certain countries in uh, ASEAN, you know, let's say Burma, right? There, there's so much uh, uh, issues, you know, yeah. with the country. But there are certain artists that are quite interesting because they, they are like uh, creating art, which is a silent protest of what's going on. There are the undoubtedly famous artists and also the increasingly popular ones that everyone hears about. Kaos, Yayoi Kusama. These are artists that can be considered contemporary masters. They are unapologetic in their creative expression and have established themselves not just as artists, but as important figures in culture. The popularity of artists can also be dependent on factors outside of the art market. With art being increasingly interdisciplinary and intertwined with other aspects of society, for example, fashion, politics, music, they are bound to be effects on artists. Granted, your first consideration is you have to like it yes. before you acquire it. But does the investment value also come into the picture? Well, obviously, it depends on the budget that you have. You have some great collectors, they, they want the blue chip of the blue chip. They pay almost unlimited amount of money. We see it every day through the headlines of some of these auction houses. I always say great art, it doesn't have to cost much money. I can give you an example. When Basquiat came out, you know, 1980 or 90, I have some of my clients in the port for $4,000. Pieces that now are easily about $200 million. That's how it is. So I always say, when you're spending part of your good earned money on painting, you have to do your own work. There is no, there is no guarantee. Buy what you like and never follow the trend because the trend might last, you know, maybe 10 years, 15 years, and then it might dissipate to do your own work. It's also a way to train yourself, to train your eyes, try to understand what's going on. It doesn't mean that it's going to be successful, otherwise, you know, no one would sell anything. As a portfolio manager, there are two types of uh, investments that you can make. You can either buy blue chips or you can buy the smaller companies. If you buy a SME listed company, maybe for 50 cents you can get one share. 
But if you get the correct information and make the right judgment, the small company can go from 50 cents to two dollars. So it can go up four times. But it's almost impossible for DBS or Capital to go up four times. So in art, it's the same. If you want to buy the blue chips, which are already very established, mm. then you may have to spend, I don't know, two million Millions. on a reasonably yeah, a low decent price, piece. decent piece blue chip, right? But it will not appreciate fantastically because the market price has been very well developed. But if you buy a young artist and you could buy them for, I don't know, 20,000, 50,000. But if they are then seen as the rising stars, you could easily make 10 times, you know, in five years or 10 years. The success of these artists can be attributed to the fact that they are unique in their own artistic expression, which is something that collectors value in artworks that they own. In a world where we value originality and creativity in conveying ideas, these artists generally fare well. Judging how art performs over time in terms of their value is less straightforward than other more mainstream financial assets, for example, stocks or bonds. It is much wiser to go by your own test. What is it that appeals to you and being informed about the artist's history? What do they represent? Where can we find their works today? Learn as much as you can about the artist. Like any other investment, you are buying into the reputation of the company. Only this time, it's an artist. Is the quality of output high and consistent? Are critics recognizing the efforts? Study the buying and selling patterns. There are many reliable resources, including auction performances, Providences, exhibition catalogs, all of which affect the value and material worth of an art piece. We have covered the basics of investing in art, from getting started to making the most of buying and selling art for profit, and working with galleries, art consultants, and auction houses to make informed decisions. As I promised you earlier, I will take you to a place where art is stored in optimum condition. Stay tuned for the next segment, an exclusive trip to an art warehouse. Secret Singapore is a digital content developed by Portfolio Magazine. It acquaints portfolio audiences with little-known places, products, and services that are of interest to them. The very limited access to said places, products, and services naturally arouse the audience's curiosity. And Secret Singapore rewards them with an entertaining and informative vicarious experience.